This maze of trees, streams, and rambling undergrowth rushing by below might easily hide an ammunition dump, an enemy stronghold, or for that matter, any form of strategic resistance. A bomber flying at high speed and low altitude scrambles the receding landscape into a confusing blur. Objectives blanketed by natural or man-made camouflage are virtually impossible targets for accurate low-level bombing. The Office of Strategic Services presents a plan whereby blind bombing of targets behind enemy lines can be carried out successfully. Where a ground agent with a beacon guides a plane to its hidden objective and in conformance with factors of speed, altitude and target distance signals the instant of release for precision bombing. These men with their equipment exemplify the type of teamwork that pays off in specialized warfare. Here's the lineup. An OSS ground agent operating in this general area has located an enemy objective approximately here. It could not be seen from the air and he has relayed this intelligence back to the base. In order to pinpoint this objective for bombing, Another OSS agent, either American or native to this locale, is dropped with a Eureka set into a small landing area near the target. For this specialized type of warfare, he has been schooled in strategy and cunning, and has learned how to maneuver and exist in the toughest kinds of terrains, how to get into enemy areas, and how to get out. This agent will function as the land-based member of the Rebecca Eureka team. He will be met by the land-based agent who, acting as guide, will direct him to the target area. Within one half mile of the objective, a spot is selected with suitable cover for setting up the Eureka beacon. From this location, he then determines the beacon target distance and bearing. That little box alongside of him is Eureka, a versatile radar beacon. Eureka will signal the proper approach azimuth and then guide the plane in on the bombing run. As the plane passes overhead or shortly thereafter, the Eureka operator signals for bombs away. If the plane does not fly directly overhead, it is off its course and no release signal will be given. The Pathfinder plane can be any medium or attack bomber. The one chosen for this picture is an A-20G. The Rebecca operator and his equipment are located in the aft cockpit. Rebecca with its indicator, transmitter and receiver unit, and control box is a novel adaptation of radar which enables the plane to home accurately on a portable ground beacon. The operator watching a pattern on the indicator or oscilloscope informs the pilot of course changes and proximity to target. The precise instant to release the bombs is also registered on the oscilloscope so the Rebecca operator releases the bombs. The pilot must be skilled in this special type of blind flying making course corrections instantly and holding a true unswerving bearing on the target. He must also maintain the prearranged speed and altitude. Rebecca's range of transmission is approximately 15 miles depending on the plane's altitude. When Rebecca contacts Eureka, the ground beacon is automatically activated or triggered and begins sending a beacon signal to the plane. The ground agent codes the plane's target approach azimuth and the Rebecca operator watching the oscilloscope pattern talks the pilot on in. Until this contact is made, Eureka, although turned on, is not actually operating and therefore cannot be monitored. To best illustrate this type of Rebecca Eureka operations, a typical problem will be enacted. OSS has informed us that the enemy objective is located somewhere in this area. Although we have flown repeatedly over this section, we cannot spot the target. Consequently, arrangements have been made to drop the parachutist with a Eureka set into this area, where he will be met by his agent partner, make his setup, and home our bomber in. Eureka, snugly packed in a well-padded zipper case, weighs about 35 pounds. It is snapped onto the parachute harness where it will not interfere with his jump nor subsequent landing.
This ground agent located the enemy target and sent the necessary intelligence data to his base, including where the Eureka operator should drop in. The agent times his jump for a spot landing. These jumps are usually made from the lowest possible altitude to avoid detection and to make spot landings. The receptionist runs out to lend a hand and they quickly clear the gear off the field. The ground agent, already familiar with the surrounding terrain, orients his partner. Until the Eureka is set up, he will serve as guide and perform the necessary reconnaissance. A point has been reached close to their objective. From a reference table, they can work out the distance factors. The plane's speed will be 250 miles per hour. The altitude, 144 feet. From these known constants, the bomb releasing spot is established at 366 yards. Eureka's location can be even farther from the target, up to one half a mile. Eureka is quickly set up and tested. Care must be taken in the selection of the operating spot to avoid interference from higher land or exceptionally large trees, as this equipment has the usual radar limitations. At an arranged time, the set is turned on and is then ready to be triggered by Rebecca. So activated, it will give the plane an approach beacon. However, until contact is made, no type of signal whatsoever is transmitted. The entire operation is timed so that the plane will approach the target at a prescribed hour. The Rebecca operator and his pilot are a team in themselves. Every step is coordinated and their success depends on immediate response to each other's orders. A second is a long distance at 250 miles per hour, and there is no room for error. Beacon contact is made, it is registered on Rebecca's oscilloscope. The Rebecca operator acknowledges by signaling back to Eureka, and the land agent then codes the approach asthma. The pilot is notified and banks off to bear in on the new course. On further instructions from the Rebecca operator, he banks back to the right and lines up by compass on the approach azimuth. The oscilloscope indicates that they are off to right of beacon. The procedure followed as the plane approaches Eureka can best be described by animation. 
The oscilloscope pattern changes during the approach will be shown in the lower left portion of the screen. When the Rebecca operator thinks they're on course, he tells the pilot to bank in. But when the compass is bearing true azimuth, the indicator shows that the beacon is to their left. The operator talks the pilot farther to port. When the plane squares away, he finds that they have overshot and the beacon is now to their right. They edge back to starboard, but as they line up again, the beacon is now slightly to their left. They ease to port, but a little too far. Next correction puts them right on the button. The Rebecca operator keeps the bearing true by constantly watching his indicator. A mile from the Eureka beacon, the Rebecca operator sends the alert signal. He thus warns of their nearness and identifies the particular Rebecca plane that will fly over in about 17 seconds. The ground-based partner with his finger on the bomb release signal button stands by. This is the most crucial part of the run. The Rebecca operator checking their course instructs the pilot of even the minutest changes. He picks up the bomb release and readies himself for action. At the exact predetermined second, the Eureka operator, who at this point is literally a ground-based bombardier, signals for bombs away. And away they go. After 10 hours of practice, Rebecca Eureka teams have proved their ability to drop 50% of the bombs within 50 yards of a hidden target. The Rebecca-equipped plane can either serve as a pathfinder dropping smoke bombs or flares or as a flight leader of small formations. This newest phase of Rebecca Eureka operation offers an opportunity for effective teamwork between ground and air, where two agencies can pool their specialized training for pinpoint bombing of hidden enemy targets.